Uh, the Frailing Ham asks, what is an acceptable level of impedance for a 17 foot vertical? Well, so I'm, ge I, I'm guessing, I'm guessing when he says, said, yeah, that is a good, that is a good, qu you know, question of what frequency, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say, um, you know, let's, let's just assume he's saying 17 foot vertical. He means the 20, maybe the 20 meter band, mm -hmm. uh, since that's, that's a rough, uh, uh 17 feet's a rough approximation of a quarter wave on, mm -hmm. on 20 meters. Um, I guess, you know, with a resonant antenna like that, the, the answer is, is, is you know, how, how risk adverse you are. So um, I'm not the kind of person that has the patience to, to, to try to fiddle with my setups until I get down to the perfect one-to-one -one, um, SWR. Because really, in 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 the pure sense, you'll you'll never you'll you'll never reach that goal. And if you are at one to one, you may not be at the most efficient um, radiating possible. So, especially with say the quarter wave vertical antennas, because typically a true quarter wave um, with a with a good ground network should drop its resonance down to about twenty bound down to about thirty ohms or so. Mm -hmm. And it'll show up about, you'll be at resonance, your X will be at zero, uh, but your SWR, because your input, input impedance is low, will jump up to about 1.4, 1.5. So. Right. You know, so like every time I've set up the Sporty 40 without the coil, <laughs> basically a 17 foot whip with radi radials, mm -hmm. uh, 20 meters. Uh, it, it varies a little bit. 1.3, 1.5 is a sweet spot, but it can be up to 1.7 or 1.8 towards the band edges. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, all of those are acceptable, meaning that you're not going to have enough or, uh, enough reflected power to cause any problems in your radio. Mm -hmm. um, but remember that impedance is a product of the uh, radiating power, which is resistance, and reactance, which is non-radiated power, okay? So think of it, uh, you can have a perfect 50 ohm impedance match to your radio, but if it's all reactance, such as a rubber duck antenna, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bad radiator. So asking what it, the best impedance is is, is, is um, a misnomer because it's very misleading, okay? Yeah. Uh, what you want to try to find is closer resonance with as low as reactance as possible. So if you're not right at 50 ohms, but you have very low reactance, that's still going to be a pretty good uh, radiator. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, but at 17 feet, you're in the sweet spot for uh, 20 meters. You can play with the length a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. But with a quarter wave radials on that, I think you'll be fine for 20. And yeah. then you can probably use that with a tuner on a couple of the higher bands. Yep. 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 So, um, def, def, most, most definitely. And, you know, I don't sweat, you know, I don't sweat an impedance, you know, um, uh, below 1.7 to one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I'll even run two to one. And as um, KC says, yeah, under two to one, I'm on the air. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No, See, I, I, would, I, think, I would totally agree with that. <laughs> that I'm, I, I got that same mantra, too. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, we're, we're, good, we're good enough for government work. So, <laughs> right. And if it were, if it were a two, or one, two to one or more, then, you know, a tuner would be acceptable. Um, but it, really, if, if you're above two to one with that setup, mm -hmm. uh, double check what you got going on. You might have a problem. And you know what I, I found? What I found out too is ground conductivity really plays a big mm -hmm. um, role mm -hmm. in in what your what your impedance is going to be, mm -hmm. because I've I've done the I've I, I use you know my my the same setup in lots of different places, and sometimes mm -hmm. I get a really good impedance, sometimes I don't, and um, yeah. you know it's if sometimes you're two to one, sometimes you're. You're one point five to one. Sometimes yeah. you're a nut. Sometimes you're not. So, so do me do me a favor, Michael. Next, so <laughs> one of your favorite spots to um, activate is Rim Mountain State Park. Mm -hmm. And Rim Mountain State Park is a big 
giant granite rock, which is terrible yep. for ground conductivity. You can't mm -hmm. stick a shovel in the, anywhere and just not hit rock. It, it's a big oh, yeah. pile of rock. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Check your SWR on that setup when you go up there and then take it down, say, like Ice Age Trail, uh, which is, you know, 20 minutes away and see what it is there. Yep. Your ground conductivity should change dramatically. A broadcast engineer that I used to work for 20 years ago um, said we had the best AM antenna site in the world because it was in a swamp. Yeah. You know, and it was it was soft, marshy land. It was actually right below the levee of the Wisconsin River in Portage. You, you were just there a couple weeks ago. Um, but that antenna site was almost always in water. And it had yeah. great ground conductivity. So even at low power at night, it only ran 40 or 50 watts. <laughs> you could hear that station 40, 50 miles away still. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It still has. It still had really good ground wave. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Rib Mountain and that um, on 40 meters, I cannot get, you know, when I use the vertical, the Wolf River Coil, um, uh, vertical, if I use the four 33-foot um, uh, ground wires that they mm -hmm. recommend, mm -hmm. I will not get a good match to the life of me with those four wires. Well, but so if how I, do you do it? Um, well, if I, if I drop them down, if I use like like four or eight, six, if I use eight 16-foot wires, mm -hmm. it works. I get, a, I get a really good match. If I use the magic carpet, I get a beautiful match. <laughs> So, hmm. <laughs> hmm. very interesting. Yeah, because we've we've talked in the past that we never see a lot of difference between <laughs> radials and the magic carpet in a normal circumstances, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but that gives you a really good a, a really good demonstration of when you do have poor ground conductivity that a mm -hmm. magic carpet may be better than having wire radials. Yeah, and then and, and and for the for the people just joining us, the magic carpet that's using we're using a window screen. Um that's just a 36 by 84 inch piece of bright aluminum window screen mm -hmm. or the or the fair or an equivalent length of Faraday yeah. cloth and um Yeah, don't, don't spend your money on the Faraday cloth guys. <laughs> just just go buy a window screen. Yeah. It's the just, screen work. They both work. They both work great. So yeah. It's, it's so cheap. Um, yeah, I, I, the great question on that. I, I, we mm -hmm. just went off the rabbit hole there, but no, that's a good one. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll and, see that in a separate video later this month. <laughs> it's probably not this month, but maybe maybe next month. I it's I've I've got a couple of um, I've, I've I've been working with an antenna, and I got a couple. Of, actually, I've got a couple real world examples that demonstrate it, but. Um, I probably won't be able to use it for a video until next month. So yeah, but we're gonna. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna try to show. Maybe we'll. Maybe on our trip to Dayton, I'll. I'll take some. I'll take some measurements mm -hmm. in various parts of the country to show the difference. Identical setups. You know what? How impedance changes. So. Yeah. Yeah. Impedance. Impedance is a really weird thing, guys. Mm -hmm. Um. And you really want to start talking to penis. One day I started throwing out <laughs> SWR and stuff, a couple engineers who were talking about motor drives and they're like, are you an engineer? No, I'm just, no. I am. <laughs> but I know, I, I know the same problem. <laughs> and blowing up radios like that. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about those variable frequency drives, right? Yep. Cause, yeah. 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 No, we were, they have a, they have this, you know, you, everyone thinks they're great, but there's a problem with them. They do have high SWR. Um, huh. And and so what happens is you take an AC frequency source, mm -hmm. usually three phase, 480, uh, 480 volts. You convert it to DC, uh, and then you use uh, these IGBT transistors, these big honking transistors, to turn it into pulse wave modulated AC. Again, right. Oh, right. So it's the same thing as your radio transmitter, guys. Only real high power. <laughs> so these big, these big final transistors, right? They're pushing it out, and if it, then if you're changing the frequency from zero hertz to sixty hertz. Well, it doesn't seem that's a big swing, but in motors, 
that could be a huge swing. And oh, you're yeah. going to get reflected power on that. And some <laughs> of these drives, when they get enough reflected power, they let the magic smoke out in a very spectacular <laughs> fashion. Let me tell you, there's sparks and flames and all sorts of stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> and fortunately, as long as you're not the guy paying for it, it's a great day. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we're having some overtime tonight. All right, guys. Let's... All right. Yeah. <laughs> we're fixing motors. <laughs> Time and a half, boys. <laughs> oh, oh. on Sunday? Double bubble. Oh, double bubble. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it does happen, though. Um, it's all real world explanation on that. Yeah. Uh, but no, very good question. Uh, glad you Glad you brought it up. KB9 VBR antennas are simple, effective, and affordable VHF and UHF antennas for amateur radio, MERS, public safety, and GMRS. Made in the USA with quality parts. Get yours online at jpole-antenna.com.